morning all and today I'm playing with TV tennis so this is um, a device that I occasionally work on it's pure fun uh, very old style electronics you can see that uh, some of it is on um, strip board but quite a lot of it is still on these uh, breadboard areas here and what this is is a very old style TV tennis game and um, now you can see that if I start adjusting pots, I can move elements of the screen uh, elements around, like the top and bottom lines, and also the left and right lines of the court. Now in the middle of the screen there's also a ball, uh, and that's being generated by this circuitry here, so let's adjust that pot. That's the uh, left and right position, or the horizontal position. Let's move to this pot, and that's the vertical position. Now, in the finished game, there will be, and I'm starting to make some space here, there will be some circuitry that moves this ball uh, constantly at a linear rate. And then when it uh, touches the sidewalls, the direction of movement will be reversed so that it bounces off the sidewall. Now I'm building this in a modular form so that, um, as I say, these pots vary each individual element. So this module here, pot and switch, the switch switches off that left hand line, controls just one element, one video synthesis element. And this is actually a video synthesizer because it creates synthetic video elements. So that's the one for the right hand uh, line. I can adjust the position and I can enable it and disable it. Now I'm just going to disable, um, I've only got three switches here, this one hasn't got a switch so I can't disable that bottom line on the screen, but I'm going to switch these off so that I've only got the bottom line and the ball. Now the ball I can disable by removing this wire which goes to that diode, so that's wire ord into the video mixer, and now I'm down to just one line. And I'm doing that because I want to switch in this part of the circuitry which is the bit that I'm working on at the moment. And to be honest, the bit that's interesting me most, and it's got nothing to do with bats or balls, this is actually the scoreboard section. So let's attach this wire. Now that brings in three horizontal lines, and I need to attach another wire, which is actually there. And that brings in a whole series of vertical lines pairs of vertical lines um, and you can see what this is kind of starting to create. Can you see these number eights here? A whole series of number eights. Now how many are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay well that's fluke because these vertical stripes are actually being generated continuously. But I have now on the screens, if I gated away all these unused bits between the eights and above and below them, I'd have eight number eight digits. And then if I use uh, some seven segment logic, I could actually switch the individual segments of these numbers on and off and have on-screen scoring. Now, the original uh, magazine article for all this was this one, Practical Wireless, July 1974, the popular new electronic game, Teletennis, played on the television screen. So this is, how old is this? Oh, it's 40 years old, isn't it? Over 40 years old. Fantastic stuff. So here's a typical uh, circuit element consisting of a 555 timer with a, a pot to vary the delay. And then a rather strange bit of circuitry, uh, a 7400. Now this isn't LS00, this is pre-LS. This is the original 74 series logic. Um, and that capacitor and this feedback resistor create a very short pulse. So on the TV screen, that translates to a delay between the sync pulse, the uh, field sync pulse or vertical sync pulse, which is off the screen, uh, to the beginning of this white line, this delay up here. Now I can vary that by turning the pot. So that's the pot on the 555. And then the 74LS, uh, not LS, sorry, the 7400, creates the width of this line. It's quite short. Um, it isn't fixed actually. I do have a pot on there that I can vary that. Let's actually try that. Which one is it? It's this one here. Oh, I sent the thing mad. 
So you can see that as I vary that, I can increase and decrease the thickness of that line. So I've put a pot actually into the 7400 uh, logic. Now, in September 1975, so that's a year and a bit after the original project was published, um, someone added an add-on, which is on-screen scoring. And this bit really intrigues me, and it's quite complicated. If you look at the circuitry, uh, that is additional logic to interface with the ball movement. But then there comes... Uh, some stuff on the seven segments and then there's some quite complex stuff a whole series of counters here some multiplexers this is a seven four four eight uh, which is the seven segment decoder ic and then if we go on a bit further down there's this enormous timing diagram to generate the uh, timing for those horizontal and vertical pulses for the scoreboard element now I'm not being completely precious about sticking to the original circuitry for this, but I have built um, this section here, a couple of LS123s, which is the top section here. Is that LS123s? I think actually they're just 74123s. Um, but what this is, is a pulse generator, a second pulse generator, and then a feedback line that runs back and re-triggers these pulse generators again. So they generate two pulses, but then go and generate them all over again. And that gives you these pair of lines here, then a delay, then the pair of lines again, pair of lines again, and it just keeps repeating this pair of lines, which are the left and, and right uh, side segment lines of my number eight digit. Now there are a couple of pots here which I, which I can adjust. Let's see what they do. Um, this one appears to be bringing the pairs of lines, yes, it's adjusting the delay between the pairs of lines so that I can space the eights on the screen, lots of them very close together, or space them out. Um, yes, that's back to my eight, lots of eights. Now the other pot is the initial delay, so I can create that left hand gap, uh, either very large or much smaller. Now for the three horizontal lines which create the top, center and bottom segments of the number eight, the design of this circuit used uh, these timers here, he's used 7423s again rather than 555s, and then this pulse generator circuit again with the uh, pair of NAND gates and the resistor feedback and the capacitor on the input. And he's used three of them, one, two, three. Now this is where I have completely broken away from the original circuit design. And I've done this using pure counter logic. So I do have a 555 uh, here to create the initial delay. Um, let's have a go at adjusting that. Now on the screen, that creates the initial delay from the field sync pulse, again, the vertical sync pulse, to the start of my counter sequence. So I can adjust that top band there. Now I've just um, switched off the vertical lines for a moment. I'm just going to do the horizontal lines and uh, show how this counter works. And to make this a little more obvious what's going on, I'm just going to take out this gating connection here. Oops, careful, don't short that to positive. And uh, the result of that is this. So what we have on the screen now is eight lines uh, of video on, eight lines of video off, eight on, eight off, eight on, and then that's it. Now this is achieved using uh, an LS393, uh, which is an eight stage ripple counter. And then taking the outputs of this, to the inputs of an LS138, which is a 328 decoder. And you can see here that the alternate outputs of the LS138, so this set, miss one, this set, miss one, and then this set are wire-awed through these three diodes to create the video output. Now that quite simply creates uh, a count of eight for video on, a count of eight for video off, and so on, as I said before. 
and then I have on this blue wire um, to one of the gating inputs on the 3 to 8 decoder I'm going to put that onto one of the higher frequency counts on the uh, ripple counter and that actually mutes away half of the first set of lines, half of the second set and half of the third set. So I now have four lines on, 12 lines off, four on, 12 off, four on. And that gives me the three bars for the segments of my numbers. Now I just felt that these two uh, slightly more advanced chips is a much simpler way of generating these three lines than this enormously complex uh, thing with three timers and three pulse generators, which I think is a bit complex. So next I need to pick elements of uh, this circuit. These are two uh, counters. This is the, for the left-hand player. This is for the right-hand player. And then the multiplexers take the two counts and put them on the appropriate digits at the appropriate times because it's all timed uh, on the screen. Then we've got the seven four, uh, sorry, the seven segment uh, decoding chip, and then there's a whole series of gating elements here to make sure the relevant segments come on at the right times. Now compare the lines created by the digital circuitry, the counters. Uh, with the line created by the analog timer circuitry. These are pure sets of uh, four lines on, 12 lines off, but here there's a little kink. So the bottom line is on for most of the line, but then switches off halfway through the line. Now if I put my screwdriver into the little trimmer pot that adjusts that line thickness, first thing you notice is it starts jittering about. Well, that's because of induced mains hum or noise because the screwdriver is now in the pot. But if I now turn that pot, I can move that kink left and right. And that's because this is just a pure time delay, again, from the field sync pulse at the top of the screen, down to the start point, and then down to the end point. But now look what happens if I turn the pot to adjust the 555 delay from the field sync pulse. It seems to be jumping in whole line increments. And it really shouldn't do that because the pot just varies the pure time delay from that field sync pulse. And what's actually happening here is coupling. Elements of the circuit are coupling together and are being triggered by the sync pulses, not because they're actually fed into the circuitry, but because they're causing glitches on the power lines. And that's because I've put hardly any decoupling capacitors in this circuit because I quite like this sort of really bizarre coupling effect. And there are all sorts of other really strange artifacts. You can see down here, there are a series of tiny, tiny little notches out of the very last part of that line. Far too short to be anything that I've created in terms of circuitry. So they're artifacts of some sort, just tiny little uh, signal bounce elements or something like that. And there are a lot of other things that would normally drive people mad designing circuits like this, but I mean, there's a lot of wobble up here. And you can even see that on the monitor, these first few lines are spaced further apart than the rest of the lines. So the monitor's not um, very pure circuitry either. So because I'm more interested in the uh, on-screen scoring for this project, than the actual bat and ball bits. The likelihood is that I'll push on with the uh, scoreboard elements of the circuit and that this thing will have uh, on-screen numerals, if not uh, graphics characters, but numerals certainly, and the scoreboard counting circuitry will probably be built even before I've got the uh, bouncing ball part finished. Now, if this sort of uh, retro electronics circuitry interests you, I did do a, an introduction to this project um, but the video is on my other channel, so that uh, if you haven't seen it, that might be one reason why. So if you go over to my channel page up here uh, in the uh, heading, header bar, there's a link to Julian's other stuff. That's my other channel, and you'll find the video introduction to this project there. And uh, it's this one here, Retro Electronics Monochrome Video Synthesizer. So here it is with all the video elements enabled. Got the side uh, court sides, um, well these are the sides I suppose, and these are the uh, ends where the paddles will be, the bats, I haven't done the bat circuitry yet, here's the ball and here's the beginnings of the 
on-screen scoring, which looks a bit of a mess at the moment because I haven't gated out all these uh, unnecessary elements. 